Hiya folks, I want to get going on Sharon's lawnmower. Let's start stripping it down. I want to get these handles off. See you in a minute. Right, I'm going to get going on Sharon's lawnmower again, as you know, and uh, some of you had a great idea in the comment section about removing these handles, and I had a closer look at it, and I'll show you. It just so happens that they're actually just welded in two places around the, the base of the handle there, so I can actually grind them welds off. But a lot of you said as well, before you actually take them off, drill your holes in it first, that way you'll know they're going to line up with the deck underneath, so you'll have no problems lining them up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I've just marked a line across the middle there and two holes there where I'm gonna be uh, center punching. So let me get my center punch. I've got one of these automatic center punches and all I'm gonna do is literally hold it on the line, push, and then go to the next one. Give it an automatic center punch, give it a couple. Like that and that will allow me now to drill them. So let me do that now. So I'm just gonna drill a four mil hole or four and a half mil hole at the moment. I don't really need to put the right size in because I'm not sure what size bolts I'm putting through there yet. But as long as I've got a pilot drill going through uh, both layers, that's where I can line it up easily. There we go, as you can see, We've gone through both layers, so when I cut, do cut the welds, I've got the holes in exactly the right places. There we go. Happy days. Now I'm going to grind the weld off, and hopefully this handle will then come off. Right, okay, we've ground through that. I've got me a little air hammer here, my little chisel. Let's see if we can just whack that off. And plug that in. Right. It's quite powerful, that, so we'll see what this can do. Oh, look at that little baby. That's the tool, isn't it? Well, that saves you a lot of hammering, that. Let's get that up. That saves you a lot of hammering, that. Absolutely fantastic. So, I uh, thoroughly recommend them. I'll just clean all this up with a grinder. And uh, when I come to put these back on, I now know that I've got my holes in exactly the right place for me to drill them out or whatever, put my bolts back on, it's gonna go back in the same place. So happy days. I'll do the other side, you haven't got to see that. And then I'm also gonna remove these uh, plastic blocks here with these large rivets just by drilling these rivet heads off. Cause these have got to come off obviously for it to go into the powder coating oven. Anyway, I'll do the other side, I'll see you in a minute. Okay, let's turn that off. Oh, that's a good hour to do that. Oh, let's get that off first. I'll put that up there. All the protection is necessary. Oh, temporary earplugs. Right, okay. So I've got it down as best I can. Uh, let me show you a bit nearer. As you can see, it's nice and smooth now. The only trouble with using the uh, flappy disc, one of these, um, I have got some plastic ones somewhere which don't dig into the metal. So if you're gonna use them, just be prepared that you've gotta go very careful because you can see little chippy marks there where it just takes a little bit out of the surface. So you have to sand them out as well, which uh, can take quite a bit of time as well. So anyway, I'm happy with that. Got a few rust spots here, obviously nothing's gone through. Uh, to contend with, so all I'm going to do is get the old Vactan rust treatment. Let's uh, show you all around it. And I'll also put a bit of filler in there as well, that's where the um, 
grinder nipped a bit more out of the welds there, as you can see, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'll just go around, treat the rust with the uh, Vaxan rust treatment. I'll give the underneath a bit of a clean out as well, although I'm gonna be painting that all with the Vaxan rust treatment under there, and then I'll be hammer in that uh, hammer right black. <laughs> not too worried about the underside, as I say, because it's all solid anyway, so. And there's not much you can do with it under there. Anyway, so I'm gonna carry on now. I'm just gonna get the Vaxan out, touch all these bits up, and uh, then we'll take it from there. Okay then, so I don't expect to finish it all in this video, but uh, we'll get the deck painted so we can get it looking as she wants it, the duck egg blue. I've still got these brackets here to sand down because she wants these chromed apparently. So we're gonna do a bit of powder coating chroming on these today. And I've just gone along and filled in a few little imperfections in the deck with my heat proof filler. This is the stuff I use. It's called Novol Thermo Epoxy Putty and uh, this is the best one I've found for filling underneath powder coating because it can take the heat of the oven. My powder is cure at 180 degrees centigrade. And although there's other, other fillers out there, which I have tried, this one has been absolutely perfect underneath the powder coating and not shown through at all. Right, let's just show you what I've filled at the moment then. So as you can see, the majority of blemishes I had along here, the ones on the top there, uh, I've, I've basically put a thin skim of filler over. It's not really thick at all, this. And here, there wasn't no damage there, but there was some metalwork ripples where it had been pressed at the factory. So I'll just smooth them out there. And coming around this side here, you might remember I dug the grinder in a little bit too deep when I took the handle off. And I've just filled in them cracks there. So all in all, I've just got to cure this now. And I've just put my oven on over there. As you can see, the big oven's now switched on. This filler cures at different temperature ranges. I like to cure at 160 degrees centigrade for about 20 to 30 minutes and then it goes rock hard. You can sand it straight away and then we can powder coat it. So while I'm waiting for the oven to heat up, I'm gonna just clean these off now. I'm gonna get the flappy disc and I've started on this one. As you see, it's not really ideal the way to do it with a flappy disc, but um, it's all I've got available to me at the moment. And uh, I can always smooth that over again with some sandpaper as well. So I'm just gonna clean these off and I'll come back to you. Okay, there we go. That's what we've ended up with now. As I say, I'm sure these were powder coated in the first place because it's really hard to get off. I haven't got to go too mad with these, as I say, but uh, I've given them a bit of a sand down as well. This can leave ridges in. Don't ever press hard with these because you leave ridges. But if you do, just go over it with the, uh, the sander and that gives you a nice smoother finish anyway. So. Uh, so I've used that, that. These are the uh, electric files. They're really, really good. These are absolutely good for getting in small places and also a combination of the old wire brushes as well. So for this little arsenal, this little job here has taken one, two, three, four different tools to get done. So just be prepared for that if you're gonna do something like this. Right, okay, this has been in now for 20 or so minutes. Right, let's see what temperature this is at. It's cooled down a lot. As you can see, it's still uh, 66 degrees centigrade there. So it's still pretty hot. Well, I'm going to get it out anyway, as I say, because uh, I want to let it cool in a cooler environment now. It's been standing in there for probably about 15 to 20 minutes. As you can see how much easier it is now for it to hang in there without them brackets on. That was the whole reason we took them brackets off. So let me get this out now. There we go. Let's get it out. Right, OK. Put that over it. And there we go. This thing now is ready to sand down. And as I said, the great thing about this filler is it's now rock hard in probably 20 minutes. And it's actually, I can sand that now. It's not too much of a problem. So I'm going to get my sander out, sand these little bits flat there, and then we'll have a look at powder coating it. Ah, right, okay. No one told me 
I had dirt on my face again. I've just gone and washed it. Right, so I've got me duck egg blue powder here. And uh, this is my little setup I use if you haven't seen it before. It's the Easy Coat powder coating system. It's uh, not too dear at all. You can get this from Electrostatic Magic and I'll leave a link in the uh, description below the video. And this is basically what you get. You get, uh, it, you get the carry box, obviously. You don't have to buy it with the carry box. I think it's about £149 if you buy it without the carry box, but the box is handy. Obviously, you can put it away and uh, keep a couple of spare bottles in there as well. And also your, your, your air filter. I don't tend to use the strap, although I did start off when I first got it, I was using the strap to put around my wrist. But uh, this is the, uh, say, the gun, and all the magic happens in that little white chamber at the end there. Uh, no need for any high voltage power or any, any boxes or whatever. What you see here is what you get. And all it does is plug onto your compressor line at about five PSI. And I just take that, I'll get the uh, little air filter, the, sorry, the water trap. I screw that on. I don't even do it tight, I just do it sort of hand tight. So you don't need any tools, so that's that. Then I'll get my adapter for me compressor hose. I'll get me powder. This one, as I say, is the duck egg blue, which is the one we're gonna be using any second now. Just turn the gun upside down. As you've probably seen me do many a times. I've got tutorials on this as well, if you wanna go through my playlists. Oh, there we go. And that's it, it's ready to go. Just connect up the airline, five PSI, five to eight PSI, and you're cooking. So let's go over now and get this powder coated. I've got the oven on. I've cleaned it all down the deck with uh, uh, acetone, so it's nice and clean, and I've got it hanging up, so let's go and powder coat it. Very hot. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna hang it up. And there you go. Let's leave that there to dry and cool down. It's a bit hot at the moment. Not too sure I like the colour, mind you, but uh, it's what Sharon wants. It's what Sharon's got. Duck egg blue. <laughs> Right, okay then, here's the old uh, chrome brackets there, as you can probably see, they've come out not too bad. Um, you're supposed to put a lacquer over these to protect them. Um, I may do that, I don't need to do that on video, but uh, as you can see, not too bad, they come out nice and shiny. And uh, again, whether or not they go with a duck egg blue lawnmower deck, I'm not too sure, but uh, we'll soon sort that out afterwards. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the video here for now. Uh, let that deck cool down and uh, we'll see you in the next video when hopefully we'll get on with some of the other stuff, looking at the engine, the, the wheel brackets and stuff like that. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my other videos and also click the little notification bell there and set your preferences to all and uh, that means that you'll get notified every time I upload a video. Thanks very much and see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.